Now I need to pick up the next group of stitches. So there are six stitches in the center that I don't pick up and then I begin on the seventh stitch. And with the same thought that I'll go ahead and use the proper needles, I'm going to pick up beginning on left needle four. Just like before, I picked up on right needle four. And I'm keeping that claw weight handy. I took it off the right side. Now I'm going to put it on the left side because the claw weight is plenty of weight for these few stitches. I have found that people figure out pretty quickly how much weight to use. It's a common beginner mistake to try to use no weight at all. The weight will give you will give you trouble, you know, the yarn getting all curled up. Knitting naturally curls. One of the big challenges in knitting is to have nice edges and borders that aren't curled up. And of course, you can always just let it curl and do a rolled up a pam or a rolled up neck, but that's not always what you want. Anyway, when you're working, if the knitting is all curled up, it's quite annoying. Okay, so I have picked up the second side, and I'm going to thread up with the main color again, and the machine is set on tension three. I'm going to knit from left to right. As you will recall, that my neck instructions were at the neck edge, to bind off two. See, this is the armhole edge, this is the neck edge. So I'm binding off again using the transfer tool. I'm putting the two stitches together on the first needle and then moving it over, then knitting through, and then two stitches together on the second needle. Oops, that's splitting, and I don't, I will start over rather than have my yarn split. So that was two bound off, and if you've forgotten how many you bound off, just keep track of what needle you should be on. I was on needle four, and now I'm on needle six, so I have decreased by two like I'm supposed to. And then I knit a row, and then the directions were to decrease one stitch on each of the next three rows. So. Here's another decrease, and knit a row, decrease, knit a row, a decrease, knit a row. Then the directions were to knit three rows plain, and bind off. I'm going to bind off again using that quick, easy loop to loop bind off. So I have just run one row loose. And so that I don't get to put my tension back to normal, I've rolled the tension back down from three. I was ten to do the, the loose row, and then back to three for the next thing I'm going to do. And then I just pick, pick this off like I did the other side. Try not to get my hands in the way so you can see this bind off again. And finally, I'm going to take the loose end of the yarn through that last loop, and that finishes the bind off. And now I'm going to take the weight off and hold this up so that you can see the shape that was formed. And I'll just put it on the gate pegs and have them hold it. So you can see the little round neck that was formed. And there is one more step that I would do on this. I wouldn't leave it all in this long uh, roll of waste yarn. I would prefer to have separate waste yarn just for those center six stitches, the ones that I wanted to be flat. So I'm just going to pick those up and knit a few rows of waste yarn.
and I just make absolutely sure that I've got all the stitches and every stitch is on a needle so that's good. Thread this purple waist yarn again and do my few rows of waist yarn just to act as a stitch holder. And then I'm going to cut the waist yarn Knit across empty to drop the yarn. And now I'm going to turn it around, right side facing, and show you what we have. This is our little neck shape. And I'm going to remove the wider part of the purple waist yarn so that you can see better. Also because I would not leave that there. I don't like that the stitches it was in had two strands of yarn in them. It just it makes those stitches get a little bit stretched, and I don't want anything stretched or distorted. Anyway, here's our next shape, and here is our little group of open stitches that are being held only by the waist yarn. And when we do a neckband, we can use those um, and pick up some ribbing. And we will also come inside all of these decreases to get a nice tidy edge. So that is how to divide for a neck. Any shaped neck that is taller here and here than the middle is going to require a division. I just happen to show a round one, but it could be square or v-neck or asymmetrical or a deeper oval. You would still have this, this little process that you go through.